And hello, Savannah. Thank you for tuning in to WRUU. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. My name is Julia Spencer, and you just tuned into Real Estate Real Talk. Welcome to my show. On my show, we talk about anything and everything related to real estate investing, and it is today the 22nd of April. It is about 12, 11 p.m., so, um, and we're having a great day out there. Broadcasting live here from downtown Savannah near Troop Square, and I welcome you all. And uh, I look forward to host the show today, of course. And this is my highlight of the week to get out of the house a little bit. And I brought with me an interview that I've actually um, was was interviewed this time. It's not me interviewing somebody, but I was being interviewed by my good friend Jason Hartman, who is a another investor, friend, and colleague, basically, in the field. And we kind of had a couple of chats on predictions and things and to see what, what's going to happen here in the near future. We had some great ideas. He's also got some, I really respect his ideas. So I wanted to bring that with you. The first part of the um, his show, actually, he's got a, a bunch of podcasts on his website. The first part of his show, um, he's talking a little bit about the situation and how it will affect things and his predictions. Wanted to bring that to you. I have my own, of course. But before I get started with that interview, I wanted to uh, Go ahead and let you know that the viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. And this interview um, or show basically that I'm read broadcasting here, one of his podcasts, was recorded, I want to say, about three weeks ago. I meant to bring it to you sooner, um, but Jason is just like me, a perfectionist. He doesn't let me have access to any raw footage or raw audios. He wants to have it perfectly edited before he puts it anywhere or gives it to anybody. So I just now got the access to it. So I'm going to get that ready for you. So please stay on. Don't go anywhere. We got some interesting conversations there and um, about real estate and a prediction of the market. And until then, I'm going to play you one of my favorite songs from my playlist right now. This one is called Fools and it's by Depeche Mode. Enjoy. And uh, you're listening to Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. I'm bringing you an interview that was conducted of me, actually, with Jason Hartman, my good friend and fellow real estate investor. And without further ado, here it is. Enjoy. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques, and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of of tenants and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. How is everyone doing today? And what are you doing today? Oh, let me guess. You're at home. <laughs> Imagine that. We're all at home. You know, I got to tell you, I have actually really enjoyed this time. As crazy as it is, it is so nice not to have a trip coming up. For someone like me who traveled at least a couple of times a month, sometimes even more, it is just really pleasant to not have anywhere to go. For once in my life, I don't feel like there's any level of FOMO you know what FOMO is, right? F-O-M-O -O. stands for fear of missing out. Fear of missing out FOMO. You know, I, th I think a lot of people feel like that. And you know what? One of my predictions in pandemic investing, and I'm uh, giving this presentation to a, uh, a large, very high-end mastermind group tomorrow. Very excited about that. Their prior speaker was Peter Schiff. So, hey, he's a little bit of a bigger name than I am. 
and you've heard all my criticisms of Peter Schiff. He's been a guest on the show before, but we won't go into that right now. Anyway, anyway, it's just really nice to not have to go anywhere. And one of my predictions is that after we come out of this, after we come out of the lockdowns, the shutdowns, the shelter in place orders, whatever you want to call it, the quarantines, I think, you know, let me know what your feedback is on this. This is just a, um, you know, this is not one of my data oriented predictions, okay, as many others are. This is just my view of how things will be after this. I think there will be a movement to a simpler life. And you know, I tell you, that's the way I'm thinking as I'm just enjoying this kind of simpler time. Now, I, listen, I'm saying this and I get it that not everybody's enjoying this, okay? Many people are suffering depression, loneliness, isolation. I get it. That was already a big problem in society, though. And in some ways, there's some comfort in the idea that there isn't a FOMO right now. And I, I think a lot of people feel that way. Like, have you really thought about that? That normally, if you are a person who has felt lonely in the past, right? One of the ingredients of that is, is the idea that you look at social media and you think, all these people are out doing all these great things and I'm not included. I'm missing out. I have FOMO, fear of missing out, right? And now it's like everybody's sort of in the same position. Everybody, everybody has been equalized. The playing field has been, the playing field has been leveled and it's, it's just a different world. And, you know, one of the shows I used to watch as a kid was The Waltons. Do you remember the show The Waltons? Good night, John Boy. That was the famous line of the Waltons. And it was about this uh, family, for those of you millennials, and maybe even some Gen Xers, I'm a Gen Xer, who don't know what the Waltons is, okay? It was a show about a family, a large family, it, living through the Depression. But it wasn't really that depressing for them, comparatively, uh, to the city dwellers, because they lived in a rural area. And in a lot of ways, although their life wasn't abundant or great in any way, economically, I'm speaking, they could provide for themselves. The people who couldn't provide for themselves were the people that were in the high density living environments in the cities. Okay, so that's the issue, right? Again, another one of my predictions is that people will will migrate in mass. There will be a tidal wave of migration to lower density living styles, especially suburban living styles. And suburban rather than rural, okay, I mean, think about it. You have urban, right? That's like in the city. And there are varying degrees of all of this stuff, right? But urban is generally in the city. And 84% of the United States 84% of the population of the United States lives in urban areas. Now, we are doing a research project, and I got to give thanks to Charles and Arnie and Evan, who are helping me work on this a little bit, where we're really trying to figure out what number of people in the U.S. and, and maybe even worldwide is susceptible to this mass migration movement that will happen. Mark my words, I'm not going to be wrong about this. This will be one of my best predictions. It will happen. I would totally bet money on this, okay? And so I think people are going to uh, have a movement toward a simpler life. I think there's going to be a lot less going out to concerts, restaurants, plays. I think that stuff is, it's going to experience a massive, massive change. One of our clients is a, a very famous musician. And I was uh, texting with him about, about the music industry and texting with him. And, you know, he was talking about how the concert industry is going to undergo just a massive, massive shock, a massive, massive change. So we'll see how that goes. So times they are changing, right? As Bob Dylan famously said, times they are changing. I had a couple of questions and I wanted to just answer those. One comes from Brian Hall and Brian says, hey, Jason, I bought my first property through you about five years ago. Been listening a lot lately. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you listening. My brother-in-law is more of a committed investor than me. I'm a musician that figured out how to make money. Hey, that's good. You know, <laughs> 
being a starving artist or starving musician is almost a cliche, right? Well, I guess it is a cliche. So I'm glad you figured out how to make money. That's good. I've been in the cult for a while. Now, I'm not sure what cult you're talking about, the music cult or the Jason Hartman cult. Anyway, I hope you're a member of my little cult. <laughs> we uh, we love new cult uh, members. Well, I guess you're not new, been in, been in for five years, right? But maybe you're talking about music. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Anyway, he's telling me that I should put all my liquid capital into the stock market right now because this is the cheapest it, meaning stocks, will ever be. I bought two properties last year in Memphis with my current liquid capital, I've been planning to just let things sit for at least three to six months and hop in once things calm down a bit. Not trying to time the market, and he put not in capital letters, LOL, maybe just a little, but evidently I am missing out on a historic event right now by not being in the stock market. I'm wondering what you'll say about this. Sarah is our investment counselor. We love her. Just thought I'd see if we could get some thoughts from the boss man, Jason Hartman. Okay, and love what you're doing. Hey, Brian, thanks for the kind words and thanks for the note. Oh, wow. Put all your money in the stock market. No, don't do that. I admit that there are some individual stocks that do look like a great deal, even me, who hates Wall Street, who says Wall Street is the modern version of organized crime. It's the modern mafia. Even I, I must say, am getting tempted, not at, and when you say put the money in the stock market, I don't know what you mean, S&P, Dow Fund, or specific stocks. I admit there are some specific stocks that are looking attractive, but, 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 I think they're gonna get even more attractive. So. If you are a market timer, as we all get tempted to be, listen, I know I'm against market timing in any asset class. It generally doesn't work, but I admit that I'm kind of looking to, okay? Haven't haven't pulled the trigger, but I'm thinking I should call up a, a stockbroker, one of the insiders, one of the people who has a nice yacht, and his buddy asks him, where are all the customers' yachts? Because all the brokers and the insiders have all the yachts, but not the customers, not the clients. Yes, Wall Street is a scam, but even in a scam, you can make a little money once in a while. I think it's too early. I think you're too early. Corporate bonds are getting downgraded like crazy. There's more damage to come. So I would I would just cool your heels. You know, we got people buying properties because they see the big game, the long term, the big picture. And I think they're making the right decision for stocks. It's just too volatile. And I would say relax, cool your jets. Uh, but listen... On this show, you've never heard it before. Well, maybe you've heard it once or twice, but I'm going to share some stock tips for you when I think they're they're valid. But again, I, I, I just think it's kind of too early. So cool your jets on the stock market, the modern version of organized crime. You can become part of the crime syndicate later. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, thanks for the nice message. Appreciate that. And thank you for tuning into Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. You're just listening to a podcast actually that I've been interviewed on here in just a moment by Jason Hartman, my friend and fellow real estate investor guru. And we're going to actually get into the actual interview with me here in just a moment. Um, but I wanted to just kind of bring you the introduction there because he's had some really interesting predictions there about uh, mass migration to suburbia from the cities after all of this is over. So I was able to uh, bring that to you here today. Um, I have a couple announcements because we're at the bottom of the hour of my show here, Real Estate Real Talk. My name is Julia M. Spencer, and I'm going to play those right now. So stay on. Don't go anywhere because we're going to get into the interview right after that. So stay on. This is a message from the Georgia State Department of Public Health. Right now, federal and state guidelines recommend staying home if possible and limiting time in public places as precautions associated with social distancing. The more we use social distancing techniques, the more we reduce the risk of the virus spreading. This is especially important for older people and those with underlying health conditions who are most vulnerable to the virus. More information can be found at dph.georgia.gov. Voting is now open for Connect Savannah's 
annual Best of Savannah Readers Poll, and WRUU is once again on the ballot. Last year, you voted us best in the local radio station and talk radio station categories. Continue your support of WRUU 107.5 FM by again voting for us in the best local radio station and best local talk radio station categories. And this year, vote for your favorite WRUU morning program and favorite WRUU host. Voting ends at 11.59 p.m. sharp on Sunday, May 3rd. And results will be revealed the night of Tuesday, May 19th. For details and voting, visit ConnectSavannah.com. And as always, thank you for listening to, supporting, and voting for WRUULP Savannah. Now you have a chance to support both Savannah Independent Artists and WRUU during this shelter-in-place order to stop the spread of COVID-19. Creatives in Need is a group of independent artists hosted by the Roots Up Gallery, which is collaborating with WRUU during this shelter-in-place to offer an online art gallery at www.rootsupgallery.com. For every work of art sold at this online gallery, the artists receive 80% from the sales and 20% goes to WRUU and its programs like Art on the Air. Interested listeners can go to www.rootsupgallery.com to start shopping today. And thank you for staying with me here for Real Estate Real Talk for the second half hour of my show here. My name is Julia M. Spencer. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And here is the interview between myself and Jason Hartman, a fellow real estate investor. And we're talking about tax sale foreclosures, my favorite topic. Here it goes. Let's get to our guest, my friend Julia. Let's talk about tax sale investing. Hey, it's my pleasure to welcome a returning guest back, and that is Julia M. Spencer. She was kind enough to lead our tax sale retreat at our Savannah Venture Alliance Mastermind event a while back. She's here to share with us a little bit about tax sale investing, but also, and that's for residential and commercial properties, but also some thoughts about where things are going in this time of tremendous change. Julia, how have you been? I've been great. Thank you for welcoming back to your show. Yeah, well, it's good to have you on. It's good to have you on. So just for the people who may not know, I thought maybe we'd start out with just a little very mini, mini course by going over some basics. What are tax sales and what are the ways that investors can profit by getting involved in them? And just give us a little overview of that, if you would. Yeah, I'll be glad to. So for many, many years, what I've been doing is basically tracking whenever government jurisdictions, counties, cities, it could be special assessment offices of certain areas, auction off real estate for unpaid taxes, basically. And these jurisdictions still have to collect their taxes. And that's basically how they get their money if the owners aren't able to pay. And there's a process for this in every state, different process for every state, actually. And yeah, I've basically educated myself on how it's done in the states that I'm interested in and areas and started tracking the sales and started buying properties that way. And that's how I basically grew my portfolio of income properties, because a lot of them I've actually kept. And yeah, you just basically go to the auctions and the properties that are cried out at the auctions are for unpaid taxes. And of course, there's a distinction between liens, deeds and certificates and all have different rights for the new owner as well as for the old owner. The transfer process is different in each one case and in each state too. And uh, yeah, so basically I've made it my life work to educate myself on how that's done in all the states and acquire properties at the same time as well. Excellent. So, and when you say tax, let's just be clear for the listeners who may not know, we're talking about property taxes. Property taxes, as well as special assessment taxes. There's actually another category to this as well. 
Good, good stuff. So if they don't pay the special assessment or the base property taxes, uh, then that tax bill goes into default. And then it ultimately turns into a deed if they don't pay. And people can either get a return on investment along the way, or an actual property maybe as well, right? That's correct. Yes. And people do it for all kinds of different reasons. Um, Some people are in it actually not to either get the property or get a profit on the way, but, or actually, yeah, just like you said, some, in some states, you, people are banking on the interest or the penalty, which is assessed once a property is sold. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Are most people investing for the yield uh, and they're mostly investing in the tax lien or take us through a little bit more about the, those two different options. So I have, seen people in all kinds of different ideas of how they go into this and and the reasons for it. A lot of people actually go to the auctions to get property. And these are local people that have seen their neighbor's property go up for sale or something and they want to get it or they just want to get a house for themselves. So I see a lot of people like that too. Um, There's also a lot of institutional investors and that's delegates that are sent from banks that are actually tasked to make a certain kind of return on the money that is being deposited with them. And so they go to the states where the penalties are the highest, and they really don't care about getting the real estate, but they are banking on the fact that the original owner is going to pay off the property within the redemption period, which is the period of time that the original owner has to get their property back. And um, they're basically banking on getting that interest rate or penalty rate, which is very significant compared to other investments. And then there's people like me that are kind of like in between. I usually buy them for investment, for rental, but I buy a lot more than I could ever use. So most of mine, I just wholesale at the end or sell to other investors. And I use the profits to fix up the one or two that I keep. Okay, so what you're saying is that you'll buy a a larger number of tax liens, and then you'll get the income on that lien, that's the interest rate, essentially, during the time, and then you won't take it to the sale, you'll sell that opportunity to another investor, and then use those funds to maybe do a a remodel uh, or renovation on maybe the the smaller number of properties you kept, right? Is that that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. And there's many different ways to skin the cat on that, too. I mean... That is such a terrible (laughs) saying, by the way. You know, I say that saying. (laughs) That is awful. We got to get rid of the skinning the cat saying. That is just awful. I have a a cat, and I swear I want to skin him sometime. (laughs) Well, that cat just ran away and is now living in fear. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, and in terms of, um, I think you asked me about liens, deeds, and certificates and all the differences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like you to go into that in a little more detail, of course, but finish what you were saying before I got off on the tangent there. (laughs) Uh, On the cat. So, there's different kinds of strategies how people get into tax sale foreclosure investing. And um, yeah, those are pretty much the main ones. There's institutional investors, myself, who's kind of like a small single person investor. I'm just trying to get my business moving forward (laughs) always. And then there's people that actually want to buy properties to live in and to remodel and keep for themselves. So you have a a wide spectrum. There's, oh, and, and there's other people too. I mean, people, there's construction companies that just buy them for their clients. So that have the access to remodeling, um, assets, tools and materials and people, And then there's lawyers. I've seen a lot of lawyers at these auctions that just know the process. So it's easy for them to make a quick buck here and there, you know, and there's different people, different people come to these auctions for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And when you say come to an auction, how many of the auctions are actually live anymore? And I would assume with virus fears and so forth, a lot less will be in the future. This is all going to move online probably. But, Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I I mean, some are online, some are live. What's the percentage now, uh, typically? You know, before this virus scare, it was about 50-50 for the ones that I've attended. So Mm -hmm. pretty much half were in-person auctions. You actually had to go to in-person and put down your ID and you get a number and it's the old traditional way of going to any auction. 
the rest was online and I can see that it's going to all move online here probably with a short order since it's it can be done and people do it that way now but remember in some states such as in Georgia right here the law actually states it has to be done in person so you know it's just I don't know what's going to happen but I think People are going to rethink those laws here soon. Yeah, I think I think you're definitely right about that. Now, with these different jurisdictions around the country, different jurisdictions are more desirable than others. Uh, they pay different yields. They're easier or harder to work with. Tell us about that a little bit and, and maybe share some of your favorite. So, yeah, we have um, a jurisdiction is what I call basically a state. And um, it could be also Puerto Rico and some of the other, you know, outlying areas as well of the that belong to the United States because they have auctions in those too. So in terms of the jurisdictions, some of them you mentioned are um, are indeed more desirable than others, and it all goes down to how easy it is for an investor to get a property within a shorter period of time, or how lenient the government will be on the original owner to get their property back. So what I, what I'm saying is. As I mentioned earlier, there's a redemption period. There's a time between the point when a property is sold on an auction and the point where the investor that bought that property at the auction can um, claim it for themselves. There's a redemption period. This period is usually a period where nothing can be done to the property by the new investor. Like they can't go there. They can't use it for rent. They can't fix it up. They have no access rights at all, no possession. And um, that's the time that the original owner has to basically buy the property back from the investor with either the penalty rate, the interest rate, or, you know, the actual full amount that the investor paid. And so in some states, that period is very short, which is very good for the investor. And in some states, it's very, very long. And you have to jump through a lot of loopholes. You have to hire attorneys to do certain kinds of paperwork processes. And in other states, it's really fast and really easy. And you've asked me to share some of my favorites. So I like my own state right here in Georgia. We have a 20% penalty, for example, which means that if I purchase a property at a tax sale on like today, basically, and the original owner comes back the next day and pays me off. And even even it's been, if it's been a minimum amount that I've paid and I didn't bid the property up very high, the original owner still has to pay 20%. So in terms of return on a yearly basis, that's a huge return. That's not 20% if you can make it in one day. And that's those states are very desirable that have penalty rates that apply from day one, for example. When yeah. you talk about the penalty rate, you talk about for the person, you're saying that from the perspective of the person who's in default, they yes. have to pay a penalty, but that penalty makes your yield higher as the investor, right? Yes, that's okay, correct. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. and, and just so people understand more broadly, let's just back up one big step, okay? Um, okay? When someone doesn't pay their tax bill, the municipality is basically, they need money. So they're looking to finance, they're not getting the money from the, the tax bills. So what they do, it, not always, but a lot of them, they basically allow investors to buy these at auction and then the investor gives that money to the municipality, right? And then that finances it for them so they don't have a big shortfall in cash. Hey, the government needs their money. We know governments uh, don't stick to budgets very well. So uh, they're, they're always looking for money. And this is one way that they can raise money is by uh, allowing investors to purchase uh, these liens. Correct. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. Good. good. And... I guess the next thing that makes a state or a jurisdiction or a municipality very desirable is the fact that some have very short redemption periods. So an investor can go in and purchase a property for very, very cheap and immediately foreclose on it or very quickly and then take possession and make it, you know, rental or sell it or do whatever they, they want to do with it. And so that's a really, really easy way to get cheap property very quickly. And so some states' redemption periods are very short. So here's the thing. Like uh, most things in life, the easier it is to do something, the more competition you're going to have. The harder it is to do something, the more barriers there are, your competition's going to thin out. So do you like 
the jurisdictions that make it easy for you as the investor, where you're probably going to face more competition from other investors trying to uh, do deals? Or do you like the harder jurisdictions where, you know, it's a it's a hassle, but there's probably going to be less competition, right? Sometimes this is kind of counterintuitive. So yeah. that's why I want to bring that up. This this is a really good question. And I, I love that question, actually. Julia, I always ask good questions. <laughs> 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 because because it actually really drives the point home of why I even do this, because it's all about basically the hunt, for me anyways. I, I'm trying to get good deals, and I'm trying to eliminate competition. So what I do as an investor, this is advanced tax sale foreclosure investing, basically, is I'll find the little niche areas that my competition hasn't discovered yet, you got to be really quick about this and things change very quickly too. And of course, you know, as you know, I have my YouTube channel, my website, people watch my stuff and they hear me talk where I've been. And of course, next, next sale, all my students are my competition, which I don't mind. Yeah, I, 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 I have that flaw too. Don't feel too bad. I create my own competition too by, yeah. by teaching people. But you know, my broader goal in life is to provide a service for the world. And I know yours is too. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, look, the pie is pretty big. It's not unlimited, but it's pretty big in the, in, you know, in yeah. the real estate world. There's a lot of different ways to make money in this business. And of course, there's other ways to, you know, make your, your road a little bit shorter to the end goal, basically. And that is, there's many numbers of ways to work with your competition or to team up with your competition or to eliminate your competition, depending on what kind of method that particular state uses. For example, let me just give you a really brief example. I have a friend in Nevada who goes to tax sales out there and they have a lottery system. So basically everybody puts a name in a hat and the person that's first pulled from that hat is the first opportunity to get that property for the price as it's set. So there's no upbid, but there's also no um, competition. You just kind of have to be lucky mm -hmm. being, in, being in Nevada, basically. But what he does is he basically pays 30 or 40 people to put their names in the hat and each gets a couple hundred dollars or a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, he's got two thirds of the people at this lottery auction with names in there that are basically his people. So he's going to win pretty much all of them. Yeah, well, that's, that's interesting. OK, I'm not so, sure if they'd be OK with that if they found out. But uh, hey, people do it. Yeah. Well, no, you, these are people that are working for him that he's yeah. hired. Okay. He pays them money and they agree that, you know, they don't have the money to buy the property but they don't mind making a hundred dollars in an hour. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, it's, so that's to buy a lien or a deed or we're really just talking about liens now. So let's go into deeds when, as soon as we can, if you want to finish up on. Um, so, I mean, the difference between liens and deeds is really only that at the end of the purchase or the auction or the win for the investor, there is a redemption period or there's no redemption period. So if you purchase a deed, you really have the property clear and full and clear, basically. But I always say that even if you go to a deed auction to just wait a little while and make sure that there wasn't any mistakes made during the auction, because I've seen seen it where people have bought deeds and they went off and started remodeling and putting all that money in the property only to realize that the county made a mistake in advertisement. And the original owner discovered it, and then you know they had to reverse the ba the sale, and and the investor lost all their money. Mm -hmm. So really, there's not a whole lot of difference between liens and deeds, except for the redemption period and maybe the price, because deeds usually sell for much higher than liens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's because you're certain as the investor that you're going to get the property, right? Yes, for, yeah. the, for the most part. I mean, there's risk in everything. Yeah, so. right, right. There are complexities to everything. And uh, and that's that's for sure true. Well, anything else you want us to know? I, I mean, look, listeners, this is a complex area. It's like learning a whole nother part of real estate. And there's a lot to it. And Julia does a great job educating people. And there's only so much we can cover here. And of course, we'll have you back on the show for more. But uh, we just wanted to kind of give you a little taste on this because we haven't talked about it much lately since our, our event in Savannah, Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else you want people to know just in, in general? No, I think now just now is a really, really good time to get educated about it, especially if you're sitting at home and not really 
being able to go to work. Now is the time to learn because I feel like the lists and the, and the sales are going to go up astronomically after all of this is done with yeah. the virus. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true. And I think it'll, the thought is that it'll probably slow down for a little while mm -hmm. as many areas have moratoriums on foreclosures, but then all of that will represent sort of pent up supply, if you will, in the system. Mm -hmm. And yep. then when those moratoriums lift, if they have a moratorium, not everybody has one, then there will be a lot more opportunities in the marketplace. So, mm -hmm. uh, so very interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. And uh, how can people find you? Uh, my website is juliamspencer.com. I have a number of audiobooks that I sell, but also a lot of my information is actually available to watch for free on YouTube. And that's also my YouTube channel is just my name, Julia M. Spencer. There's some 600 plus videos for people to watch on just about anything related, specifically to tax sale foreclosure investing. Excellent. Julia, thanks for joining us. And thank you for being with me here for Real Estate Real Talk with Julia M. Spencer. This was my interview with Jason Hartman, and he is a fellow investor, real estate investor and guru. He has... Uh, been doing podcasting for many, many years. I think he has got like some 9,000 episodes or so on um, his various websites and his various channels. He has a lot of masterminds. And as he stated in the interview, I did actually attend one of his mastermind group meetings here in Savannah, Georgia. It was about a year ago. And that was a, a lot of fun to educate his um, his colleagues and his, his friends and other investors as well on tax sale foreclosure processes. I love doing that. And yeah, I'm glad you tuned in. This show right here, Real Estate Real Talk, we talk about anything and everything related to real estate investing. And I am usually here live on Wednesdays from 12 p.m., actually a little bit after 12, after the happiness message until 1 p.m. Also, you can catch any shows that you may have missed on the WRUU Dot org website am getting really good at posting them as I've learned how to edit my own shows. So yay, great job on me. <laughs> and um, but what that actually results in is that you get to hear these shows faster. So if you have missed any part of the show or any want to listen to previous shows, just go to the WRUU.org website, go to schedule. There's the um, archives as well under um, go just go to Wednesday to the date of the show and the um, the hour and you can scroll down and see my my uh, picture there and you can click on that. I'll have my show information and on the bottom you can listen to the shows, but also you can uh, catch them on my YouTube channel. As I mentioned, my name um Julia M. Spencer is how you can find me. And if you have any comments, suggestions, uh, improvements, criticism, just send it to me, realestate at juliamspencer.com. I'm going to be hosting another webinar next week, free webinar on April 29th at 8 p.m. If you want more information on that, just send me a message. And that's realestate at juliamspencer.com. And that's it for me for the show today. I hope you all have a great Wednesday afternoon. And I'll talk to you guys later. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliamspencer.com.